Good afternoon, Roger here. I think Brian has uh, given a great presentation, and I think there's kind of testament, right, to the power of content. Right? He's showing all these great videos, great content, and that's helping to propel uh, companies, right? You're getting to know companies that you might have otherwise not heard, of, heard about. And I increasingly, I see a lot of companies, because I work with brands, and they're using content uh, as a key part of their marketing strategy. Uh, I'm not going to talk about myself, uh, but I, I just want to give a bit of background on how I became kind of a senior advisor to Crowdsourcing Week and why am I speaking here. Uh, back in the mid-90s, I was fortunate to work for SoftBank, a giant internet company. They invested in Yahoo, E-Trade. Uh, and through SoftBank, I ended up working with you know, companies like ZDNet, CNET. Uh, SoftBank had an interesting mantra for all the companies. Right? It says that, Remember this back in the mid-90s, the internet will change the way we live, work, and play. And I think indeed it has in more ways than I have imagined. And one of the phenomena that he has given rise to is crowdsourcing. Right? The fact that all of you are here, I don't think I need to explain about the power of crowdsourcing. And I think to some extent that's how Epi you know, found me two years ago. You know, we connected on LinkedIn and he spoke a little bit about his vision to bring crowdsourcing week. Uh, to Asia, I agreed to be, uh, to be his advisor, in part because I'm a firm believer of crowdsourcing. I, I have a number of businesses that I'm involved in, but I spend 120% of my time at Closet, a fashion social network uh, that truly is built upon crowdsourcing. Uh, I think we've done something right, so we're one of the few companies in Singapore that has raised a Series B round. So uh, today, I'm not going to talk about techniques, so on and so forth, but really to share a little bit of how Closet was built, what are some of the best practices that I've tried to apply to it and share it with you, right? Now, um, at every presentation, I always answer this question, right? What is this old guy you know, doing in the fashion business? Uh, I'll tell you the story, a short one. Uh, prior to starting the business, I was traveling tremendously, right? 2009, I was traveling 275 days that year. I was never home. Uh, so when I'm home, I try to be a good husband. I come home, I don't work. I spend time with my wife. Uh, and every time I'm with her, her phone rings. And she's like, I'm sorry, hubby's back. And I realize that I'm actually disrupting her life by her schedule. So I try to be a good husband. So I, I join her activities, right? We wake up early in the morning drive the kids to school, 6 o'clock, we go to the stadium, we run with our friends, so sometimes it's one, sometimes it's two, sometimes it's four, and after we run, 7 o'clock, you know, we go for breakfast, you know, Singapore have these little hawker centers, coffee, tea, I'm sitting there, uh, listening to the conversations, so over time, I got accepted as one of the girls, right? <laughs> and, and it was interesting, right, eavesdropping under these conversations. So, my wife is a beauty junkie, right? She's a beauty junkie. And she's not just buying cosmetics, but she understands the science of cosmetics, right? SK2, you know, how Pitara, you know, that magic liquid that rejuvenates your face. You know, someone is, uh, you know, and, and she's such an authority that she actually influences the rest of her, her group, right? In the type of cosmetic to use, the processes that you apply, you know, the toner, so on, you know. Uh, and I'm, I'm listening, and then someone is an expert in shopping. You know, this is where you go and shop in Hong Kong, this is where you shop in Bangkok. Uh, and, and the typical question that I see them asking is like, when someone comes back from a shopping trip, first question, what did you buy? Right? I know you know the second question. Where? Right? Third question, how much? <laughs> right? Last question, can I see your bag? Can I see your clothes? It never happens, right? They're so busy. So I'm, I'm listening to all this and I'm like, how interesting, right, if I can build a platform where I can take all this collective knowledge, where to buy, where to shop, beauty tips, show what you have bought, where you're having even to get, you know, bring them to your house. So that was the beginning, right? That was the beginning of the idea that I had to build Closet, right? So I think this is how it, how it came about. So I'll share with you a little bit about uh, at Closet, what we do. So, uh, as you can see here, uh, in building a business, I'm also looking at 
first, I need a platform, right? Uh, Singapore is small. How do, how do we create something that is that transient? Some of the cultural, geographical barriers that I have across the region. Well, try to make it visual, right? I always say that the picture of a Chanel bag is a Chanel bag in any language, right? So I think those are some of the thoughts that went behind the building of Closet. And, and this is interesting because I came from CNET, ZDNet. Right? We have editors. Right? At ZDNet, I have editors writing about routers, switches, enterprise software. At CNET, I have you know, people writing about games, about uh, digital photography. But I saw the rise of the internet has given power you know, to the crowd to create compelling content. Content that they are so deep, so specific, that they even surpass that of any editors that I can hire. So this is where, in my model, I've decided that I need to use crowd-generated content. Right? So uh, this is some of the, uh, some, these are some of the basic parameters that we set in building businesses. But of course, I, we had a lot of challenges, right? So the company is three and a half years. When we first started, you know, how, how do we get the crowd to contribute? I'm often asked, how do you control the content? You can't, right? You can't, right? This is social media. You can't say, your, co your content is not nice, I take you down. Your content is not relevant, it's abusive, offensive, I can't. But if you're, you have a picture of yourself and it's not nice, too bad, right? You can hide it, but you can't take it down, right? So I think you can curate, right? So these are just some of the thoughts process behind that. Um, as I mentioned, um, I just want to talk a little bit about why I feel content is going to be key, right? A lot of companies don't use content marketing because, as uh, Brian has shown, it's not easy to produce content. It's expensive to produce content. But content has to be a key part of your entire marketing puzzle. Why? Content improves your SEO, right? Google loves relevant, quality content, period, right? So I think if you have content on your site, uh, it helps you a lot uh, with your searchability of the website. Content improves engagement and conversion. That is proven. I will show you a, a case study that I have done uh, two years ago. And uh, recently, I came across an article that says that uh, video actually today improves online transaction many folds. Right? Someone watching a video is more likely to buy a product that he or she has watched versus just clicking onto a picture of a product. So video is going to be the next big thing too. Um, content is engaging, right? Today, a lot of brands are looking at what they call content co-creation with the crowd, right? Because the consumers are, are much smarter today, right? What brand is telling you? Question mark, right? And add question mark. Content, they consume. Content fits your social media strategy. Very simple. I mean, Brian has proven that. You have good content. People will share that. Right? How many times have you shared a quote of the day, a funny picture, you know, a, a, a beauty tip, a shopping find? I think content generates a lot of uh, social sharing. So I think it's going to be a key part of your social media strategy. And last but not least, good quality content makes your company, makes you a thought leader, right? As what, as what Brian has, uh, has done, sharing all this great content that uh, Airbnb has produced, uh, WestJet has produced. I think that demonstrates the power of content marketing. Um, I've chosen to share a slide from Content Marketing in Institute. Uh, this is a survey done uh, this year uh, in North America about the number of B2B company that is using content marketing. Uh, I see that is already happening. There's, a, there's already a stated trend. I think it's coming to Asia. I think a lot of companies here are still not using content to its fullest, content marketing to its fullest. I think there's a lot of opportunities out there. This is a survey that they've also done about companies that they perceive they are good in content marketing and those that think that the company are not good. So if you look on the left-hand side, the most effective companies have a documented content strategy. You should, right? Content is not about just waking up one day and say, let's, let's do a video or let's do a white paper. I think it has to be structured, 
right? You have to understand your audience. You know, what kind of message are you sending, uh, sending out in the content? So you need to have a content strategy documented. Um, few companies has people who understand content, so you really need to assign someone who understands the crowd. What type of content would you want to create? I do, at my company, I do have people who look after content, who curates, who helps to strategize what type of content do, that I want to encourage and close that. Uh, what's going to be trending? What's going to be popular? What are people going to be searching for? Uh, number of tactics used. Uh, this is obviously, there are many ways of creating content, right? So you could be a white paper, you could be a game, uh, you could be a blog, uh, you could be an avatarial. So what kind of form, what kind of tactics do you want to use in your content? So the more you have, the more relevance that you have, the better. Um, the type of social media platforms that is right for your content, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. I don't think all social platforms are relevant to you, so choose the best ones uh, that make sense for you. Budget, you still need to spend some money on content. So I think you need to allocate your budget. And last but not least, you can see that uh, producing content is expensive, it's challenging. So I'd like to share some of the ideas that uh, we have deployed at Closet. Birds of a feather flocks together. So really it's about creating a platform that people can connect. So when we first conceptualized Closet, you know, it could be fashion, but why did we exclude guys? We felt that women wanted a community where they can share openly. So those were some of the thoughts process that we have uh, put together, and this is where, in the case of Closet, is really a platform, visual platform, where women can come and share. Uh, we listen, we watch, we feedback, uh, we find out what people like to do, we encourage it. Uh, this is where we give ideas, right? So what, what, what are the content that our crowd is looking for, right? We encourage the content creators on our side. Feedback. Uh, we have... You know, if you look at the typical content, uh, the ratio of content creators versus those who consume content, typically it's like 10 to 1, right? 1% or 10% will be creating content, 90% will be consuming content. So you need to reward, right? You need to recognize that the 10% who are contributing content, encourage them, reward them, and, and let them know that you appreciate that what they are actually doing for you. Now, it's also important that content has to be, why, why would I find your content interesting? Content has to be compelling, entertaining. It can be a utility. So in the case of uh, Closet, for example, if you talk about utility, some of the things that we have done is uh, we have done some crowdsource curation of the best deals, right? The best... Uh, promotions from 5,000 brands across the world. Uh, we have what's happening, what, what are the sale, where can you find the sale? We get users to encourage them to post uh, beauty tips. So these are, these are really relevant content that we encourage to do. Um, some of the stuff that we find is popular is really the top 10s, how-tos, uh, videos is uh, getting more and more popular. Uh, if you look at the millennium generation, uh, my kids, they don't watch, they don't read newspaper anymore, right? So they're very used to consuming content, uh, video content. So even for us, uh, some of the things that I'm doing is really about uh, the, 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 the videos. We have videos about explainer videos, about how to do things, rather than reading about how to do things, you watch a video about how to do things. So I think video content is increasingly becoming much more, uh, much more common. And last but not least, when you're doing crowdsource content or crowdsource curation, moderation is very, 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 very important, right? So uh, as an example, when we first started, uh, we are often asked, uh, why, why is that the content on clause that looks, looks so nice? It didn't start out that way, right? So my analogy is always when you go to Disneyland, right? It's pristine, it's clean, you know, you, you, you're, you're conscious, right? Even the sweet wrappers you're putting into your pocket, you know, because, you know, the place is clean, right? Versus if I'm in China, 
you know, in the early days of China, right, things are littered, so you, you know, you just have to say, oh, okay, it's okay, I'll just throw this thing here. So I think once you have set the environment, right, create the right environment. So when we first started, we hired a team of um, community managers, we post, we upload uh, things that we showcase, right, so I think that sets an example for the rest of our community uh, to share accordingly. I think, I think it's, it's using all these moderators to shape right, the, the look, the feel, the type of content that you want, encourage those that you like and discourage those that you don't. Right? So I think these are some of the basic things that you could look at. Um, we do, uh, rarely do we see uh, offensive community people on our side, but if they do, take it down. Right? I think you just have to nip trouble uh, in the bud. Um, I'm going to talk a lot about deep streaks. I'll, I'll just share with you a little bit about what we have done at Closet. Now, I, so if you see over here on the left side, there's a user-generated uh, uh, photo from Closet.co. That's my parent site. So in the middle, there's a site from our localized version in Indonesia. And Oshare is a site, uh, is a joint venture site that Closet has with Rakuten in Taiwan. Now you can see that this is, this is something that we have recently introduced, right? Selfie has been the in thing for the last, what, uh, 12 months, 18 months. So we introduced this into Closet uh, very recently, although they were already posting the look of the days, but uh, I would say over the last six months, we see a lot, a lot of selfies, right? So I think this is where we encourage Hey, you know, do uh, post your selfies. We work, we work with like uh, brands, camera brands, uh, phone brands to say post your selfies, right? And you can see that yes, there are similarities. And although these come from different countries, the content can be shareable. So in the case of Indonesia, we had like uh, hijab of the day, right? So we do a bit of customization. They post a hijab of the day. Uh, it's equally interesting to use this in Singapore and also in Taiwan. We, uh, we encourage our members to share the fashion finds, the buys, you know, like, like uh, every woman here is, oh, you know, it's like a food find, right? So this, this is the best buy from Thailand, this is the best buy from Singapore, this is the best buy from Chatuchak, uh, this is the best buy from, uh, from uh, Bugis Junction, you know, from Shanghai, a tailor that I found. So this is a place where we invite our members to share, right, the fashion finds, and buys, and they love to do that. This is really another place to express themselves, to express that, and to have people appreciate that, wow, that was really interesting, right? You see conversations where I say, oh, that was fantastic, right? The tailor that you have met, recommended in Shanghai, you know, I just went there, came back, uh, so on and so forth, right? So this is, again, creating the right type of platform where people are happy to share. Beauty tips, um, I already mentioned that. Now, I think when you look at selecting a platform and selecting the type of content to curate, you have to uh, give it some thought, right? So I'll give you an example of what Closet is not. We are not about uh, beauty reviews. Why? Because beauty reviews tend to be very text-based. So in the case of Closet, because we are very visual, we are very image, we are very video-driven, we want to focus on areas where we, have a comp uh, we provide a compelling uh, difference, right, versus other <laughs> content sites. So examples of this would be things that is hard to describe in forums. So examples would be nails, right? We have a lot of ladies posting nails. You know, how do you do stenciling on the nails? Uh, how do you make this hairdo? You know, how do you do this smoky eyes, you know, a bow lips? <laughs> no, and, you know, so these are exactly the type of uh, beauty tips, right, and where Visually, it's, it's, uh, it's easy for people to consume the content versus other platforms, so you have to create a difference, right, in the way you present your content. Uh, I'd like to share with you some case studies. Uh, I, I always use this. We did this about two years ago with ASOS. I think most girls who know ASOS, uh, one of the very popular online shopping uh, based in UK. Uh, the claim to fame is really Free shipping, right? That's what my wife said. Hey, shipping is free, so let's buy. <laughs> yeah, that's a good reason. <laughs> um, now, this simple content curation, 
resulted in a lot of different benefits right, for us and for the brand. Uh, it was a very simple exercise. We just asked our members, just goes to the, you know, we have ASOS store on, on Closet itself. I say, just go to the ASOS store, curate your five favorite items under $50. Right, very simple, and then we did give away like a big price, right? I think we gave away three fifty dollar vouchers. Uh, so obviously, those who participate was like, ah, oh, they, they like to do that. So very simple, just go to the site, just browse the site, uh, curate five items under fifty dollars, right? We had thousands and thousands of entries, and the top entries, most of the entries were more than five items, right? So the top, these are the top five. 56, 62, 62, 68, 121 items. 121 items, right? You need to just curate five, right? So this shows that the user was so engaged. Now, what is the outcome that I got from this particular exercise? For the brand, they were able to use our platform to crowdsource insights. Right? You know exactly you know, what people are curating, particularly people in Asia, right? Because this site is from US, they're catering to a global audience. They were able to get insights from here. What do Asian community likes about ASOS? Now here, these five women, they are the best advocates for ASOS. Why don't you invite them to be the brand ambassador for ASOS in this part of the world? Right? So this is, again, a way to crowdsource your influencers and the brand ambassadors. Now, what is interesting is these were the curators, right? But because a lot of the users were looking at the curation, it took collection, thousands of items. We didn't ask any of them to buy, right? We ended up with 121 transactions. So you can see that the engagement actually results in conversions. Right, so this is a, and this is a formula that we have used for many, many uh, stores that we have launched on Closet, and it has always worked. Now, another, another thing that we have done was a uh, uh, fashion find campaign. We have an app, um, although you don't really need an app, uh, but basically, in this case, you can see that we have ran a campaign where we ask users, you know, if you are traveling, you've been in Singapore, you come across some fashion find, just take a photo, upload, you know, we have a simple description of, wow, you know, there's, you know, this store sells great shoes, you know, great beauty products, so on and so forth. Uh, we did this over three months, uh, January, December, November. So this created uh, a very compelling content for anyone, right, who comes in and can see, you know, whether find this, whether buy that. I think this example has been Oh, sorry, this model has been replicated a number of times. Uh, currently, I'm working on two projects, just to share with you. So one is with a major uh, credit card in Singapore. Uh, it's a ladies' card. And what do they want to do with Closet? They want us to curate the best finds in this part of the world. Not, not just in Singapore, right? But across the region. Right? So we have a very interesting things that we're doing for a brand like that. So they're coming to Closet and say, can I use a platform to curate finds that I can invite, right? Our members, our credit card holders to come and make purchases. Uh, another, another project that I'm working on is, is a US company. They represent uh, uh, about 140 of the top fashion retailers in the US. Uh, it's a very interesting uh, project because uh, she, she was here in Singapore attending an event and she was shopping at Marina Bay Sands, and she was, she was shocked, right? She went to Brooks Brothers, said, Roger, you know Brooks Brothers here? The prices are 85% higher than what you could buy at a retail store in the US. Now, of course, the brands here is not going to like that, right? But the truth of the matter is, then she said, wow, wouldn't it be interesting if you can get your crowd to go out and make comparison right, between the prices that they can get in the store versus the prices of all their merchants in the U.S. and make them available on Closet, right? Extremely interesting program, right? So I think this is an example of how you can really make use of crowdsource, create content that can actually result in conversion, right? So it's an interesting project that we're actually 
working on right now. Uh, last but not least, um, this is a project that we just completed about two days ago. So Fashion Step Out is an event that took place, uh, I think it was last Saturday, uh, just two days ago. So they closed uh, Orchard Road. Uh, the event is actually organized by the Orchard Road Business Association. Uh, they are the mall owner, so we are, we are the partner for this event. And uh, in this instance, it was a very simple hashtag, uh, people uploading onto a, a, a microsite that we have created where we actually pull in all the content. So you can see that uh, pre-event and post-event, and even during the event, we were getting our community members as well as, you know, uh, they were marketing to the public at large to, to post photos of the event. So we had a live feed that was uh, going on all the time. Uh, and this is actually providing very, very compelling content right, to, to our audience. Um, and you can see over here, you know, these are really some of the photos uh, that have been posted. So you actually get the pulse of the event that's happening. Uh, we do this a lot with, uh, with brands. So I've, I've created a platform. So we are, we are partnering with KL Fashion Week, Philippines Fashion Week, Jakarta Fashion Week, so on and so forth. So we are providing this platform to brands to use a platform to create content uh, to market their events as well. Okay, um, that's it, right? So I, I want to end on a lighter note, right? So my friends call me Mel Gibson. <laughs> <laughs> they think I know what woman wants. Um, <laughs> so a, a tip for guys, I always ask, say, Roger, you know, you always work with women, right? So do you have any tip? I say, Yes, I say the secret. You know what's the secret to uh, having a really a good relationship with your partner and your, and your wife? I say, yeah, it's very simple, right? Uh, just remember this. Uh, every time you're wrong, just say sorry. Okay? And every time she's wrong, just keep your mouth shut. <laughs> last, last one. You know, I, I have this inflated ego, right? You know, you think you know what woman wants, and uh, yeah, I mean, I've been married 25 years. I'm entitled to it until recently. So I celebrated my 25th anniversary, uh, wedding anniversary, very recently. Took my wife out for dinner, nice place. Uh, started this conversation, which I shouldn't have. <laughs> so we are reminiscing about. Old times, right? Saying, oh, no, no, we got married 25 years ago. You know, I was young. I had no money in the bank, no car. I was living with my parents, right? But I said, well, we got married. At least I was sleeping with a hot chick, you know? <laughs> so I said, okay, that's cool, right? So I said, 25 years forward, you know, I work hard. I have some money in the bank. I drive a nice car. I have a beautiful home. But I'm, I'm sleeping with a 50-year-old woman. <laughs> Dicey, right? So I told her, you know what? You're, you're not holding up your end of the bargain. Oh. And that's the moment when I realized that it's a conversation that I shouldn't have started, right? <laughs> so I, I look at her and she contemplated. And I was surprised by what she said, right? She, you know what? I think you're right. I think it's okay for you to go out and get a hot 25-year-old chick. <laughs> I said, really? I say, sure. But if you do, I'll guarantee you that you have no money in the bank, <laughs> you have no car, and you go back to living with your parents. <laughs> Thank you.